pretty inflammatory title, isn't it? Well, I'm glad you clicked on the video because there's plenty of evidence indicating creatine impairs kidney function from case studies to anecdotes and even a study that I'm going to be showing you and not only impairs it, but drastically so. And yet organizations like the International Society of Sports Nutrition, the ISSN, have extensive scientific reviews discussing creatine safety. And I've been consuming it for 15 plus years. So why would anyone be mad enough to destroy their kidneys like me? Well, this will be a perfect illustration of understanding the landscape of science rather than buying into headlines. So as the ISSN mentions, there have been several case studies and a few animal studies that have shown that creatine leads to renal disease, so kidney disease. In these case studies, people who were consuming creatine also suffered from kidney disease. And aha, the link hath been made. However, one of those case studies indicated that the person was consuming 25 milligrams of creatine a day. And if you aren't familiar with creatine dosing, that's about a 0.5% of the normal amount consumed to see creatine's ergogenic effects. So was the kidney disease caused by this massively underdosed creatine consumption or was it caused by something else? It's like, it's like licking one spoon of cake batter one time and claiming that's why you have diabetes. But let's get to some of the more solid science and let's discuss the problematic kidney markers when getting a blood test done. For example, have you ever gotten your blood work done and your doctor has pointed out their concern over your elevated creatinine levels? To, to be clear, that's creatinine, not creatine. I have, as a matter of fact, I have elevated creatinine right now. Or even more serious, a drastically suppressed EGFR measure, which is a more direct measure of kidney function. As a matter of fact, I've experienced a significant 10 or even 20 point drop in my EGFR measures. Still in the normal range, but a 20 point swing is massive. So why would I chuckle and keep taking this kidney poison? To understand why, we have to understand why creatinine might increase in the blood. Creatinine is a degradation product of creatine. So when creatine is in our cells, which it is regardless if we, if we supplement with it or not, creatine will spontaneously degrade to creatinine over time. This creatinine is then released into the blood and can then be elevated when measured. Since elevated creatinine is linked to chronic kidney disease, because it could imply that the kidneys are unable to eliminate enough creatinine in urine, the connection has been made. However, creatinine is a rudimentary and incomplete measure of kidney function, since, as we discussed, creatinine can also be elevated simply due to, you know, creatine supplementation. We don't have to rely on anecdote either. We can actually see that in studies like this one. In this study, researchers had people consume three or five grams of creatine a day for over a month and did extensive measures of their kidney function. As we discussed, creatinine levels increased as seen here. You can see the G3 and G5 are the creatine consumption at three grams and five grams per day. The placebo is those that did not consume creatine. The pre and post measures are the pre-supplementation and post-supplementation measures. As we can see for the creatinine measure, the creatinine only increased in those consuming creatine at either dose. That's all indicated by the p-value below 0.05, which is the standard statistical cutoff point. Okay, so creatinine is not just elevated for me, but also elevated in a randomized controlled study. But what about EGFR, the slightly more direct measure of kidney function? Again, here we see a worrying trend of a reduction in EGFR or glomerular filtration rate, which is an estimated measure of the ability for your gl glomerulus, a part of the kidney, which I always have trouble pronouncing, to remove solutes, molecules from the blood and dump them into the urine to be excreted. If its function diminishes, then we are removing fewer 
of these potentially toxic molecules. And this harms our entire body as those molecules that should be removed remain in the blood longer. So looking at the data again, we can see as we focus our attention on EGFR, which shows no statistically significant change in the placebo, but an over 20 and almost 30 point decrease in filtration rate in both the creatine conditions. So again, we have to ask ourselves, if these metrics are clearly indicating across several kidney proxy measures that creatine reduces kidney function, why is there no quiver in my voice? Is it because I'm recklessly stupid? Well, while I might be, it isn't only that. The reason comes down to how EGFR is measured. Yes, it is a blood test, and yes, it indicates kidney health but it alone is still insufficient, even if you were to pair it with elevated creatinine. Why? Because EGFR uses creatinine values in its calculation. According to the National Institute of Kidney Disease, EGFR is, as I mentioned before, a more direct measure, but still an estimate, but not a direct test. And that estimate is heavily relied on creatinine values. So if creatinine values are elevated, not because of a lack of clearance at the kidneys, but an increased production at the muscle and other tissues, then EGFR will reflect a dramatically poor value when creatine is consumed, but not because of anything wrong with the kidneys. Okay, that's all fine and good, but just because we have proof that creatinine can also be elevated due to greater breakdown due to the increased available substrate, creatine, does it not mean that the elevated creatinine couldn't come from poor kidney performance. So how do we prove that the kidneys are truly not the problem? Well, if we put on our thinking caps, we might come to a solution that we can test other molecules that are filtered by the kidneys that are independent of creatine consumption. If other molecules like proteins, uh, nitrogen are elevated, this would indicate there is a direct problem with the kidneys. However, if we return to the data, we see that urea, protein urea, including specific kidney injury molecules are all in the normal range and do not budge based on creatine consumption. So now we have evidence that the kidneys are not damaged. They're working properly with other filtrates and we also know that creatinine influences EGFR significantly, which is in turn increased with creatine consumption. And if we add to it all that the National Institute of Kidney Disease points out that muscular individuals and those who consume creatine shouldn't base kidney health on EGFR for the very reasons that we mentioned. I think we can conclude that my kidneys are unlikely to be deteriorating due to my incredible muscularity or my snorting creatine addiction. Wow, Nick, <laughs> get over yourself, geez. Anyway, the point being high creatinine and lower EGFR is not sufficient to diagnose kidney disease when you are supplementing creatine. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't verify with other measures to be certain that there isn't some underlying problem. If you're interested in more of this kind of content, I promise there's a bit less of my ego in this one. Speak with you over there. Bye.